in the akhirah. Because if I believe in the akhirah, and believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this, me this money, then I must give. So, ata wa taqa. And when you look again to the examples of the Prophet, the Sahaba, you can see the level of taqwa goes with the level of ata. I'll say this again. When you look at the example of the, the Prophet himself, then the Sahaba, if you do these graphics, you will see those who are very high in Iman, they are very high in giving. And this is why you will find the great Sahaba, they were the giving us the, the highest level of giving because they have the highest level of Iman here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word al-husna al-husna as most of the mufassirin Ibn Abbas, Qatada, Sa'id and Jubayr and Jahid said al-husna means the day of judgment or in other words the rewarding that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha the one who come with hasana Good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him ten deeds. So this is Imam al husna And Saddaqa, Saddaqa, believe. And this is what's recommended from the believer. And there is difference between even only Amana and Saddaqa. Amana, he just believe. Yeah. But Saddaqa, he believe and he certainly Believe. So you see the, the level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like to raise the believers to and this is I can say the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us in this surah that he'd like the believer to give have taqwa and not only believe he has to be certainly believe yani, to reach the level of Siddiq, which is we know that Abu Bakr Siddiq reached that level and the other great Sahaba reached that level and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he spoke about الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ when he explained who are they, he said أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَّ أُولَاءُكَ رَفِيقًا So you see here the second category after the Nabiyyin, who are they? Siddiq. And so not only Muhammad so Hawariyin of Isa alayhi salam, Siddiqin. Those who believe with, with Nuh, with, uh, with uh, Salih, with Hud, with all the previous prophets, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all these followers who believed and carried the message of delivering uh, <coughs> the truth, they consider to be Siddiqin. وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى Now these are what? The actions. Remember what I said, the theme of the surah is action reward. So what's the action? Aata, taqa, sadaqa bilhusna. This is what? Come on, brothers. Action. Action. Now reward. What's the reward? We will make smooth for him the path of ease. Now the word here, the verb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used, sa, sa yasiru. Sa in Arabic, when you find the verb with start with sa means the future. So and when you say a word in the future means that you are giving a promise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here giving a promise to those who are doing these things. What's the promise? We make ease or smooth for him the path of ease. Subhanallah. 
And when you look, you'll find differently. When there is a person giving, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make easy for him this. Because it's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will give the, him the tawfiq, give him the help, the protection. And believe me, brothers, I've seen it many times in my life and other people. When you start doing something good for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will see this ayah with a clear manifestation. Very clear. You start a good thing, you'll find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ease the things to you. First of all, you will use I'll give you an example. Just yesterday. Our school, Oliver Tree School. Just one day before, two girls came and said, because we were talking about supporting these refugees in Syria, they said, can we do something to help these people? We'll tell the parents to bring some cakes. We'll sell them after Juma. We'll collect some money. Personally, I was expecting 100, 200. SubhanAllah, 850 pounds. Selling cakes and two boys and two girls stood with uh, these buckets and ask the people to drink. Subhanallah. Yani I, I see clearly that there was good intention, right intention. There is boys, girls, actually it came from girls. They, they like to do something for the sake of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what? Because he is the provider, he is the one who guides. He encouraged, Allah encouraged all these people to give. And these people, they gave. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows that these people, they're suffering and they need help. And you see, yani every, every time I enter the masjid, because the campaign is there, every time I enter the masjid, especially when I come to Isha, I find nearly the entrance of the masjid full of uh, diff different types of things, food, clothes, and the brothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, bless them and reward them. Sometimes they stay until 11 or 12. They are boxing, or they sorting their clothes and sorting the food and all of these things to send it there. So you can see it. And this masjid is another example. Yani if you came to a person three years ago, three years ago, let me say, and say to him, you know, you can see this uh, warehouse or the, this roof there. It will be, mashallah, a nice masjid and lights and all of these things and new uh, wallets and the wudu facility. You see what you are talking about. You know, look, we are going there and it, when it is winter, we keep like this because there is no heating. I remember, I remember this. When we, when we come here, the brothers you keep you tick, 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 it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So maybe spend half an hour starting, trying to start it and doesn't start. But when there is intention, this is the lesson I like you to learn, brother, because I have practiced it in my life. I know this. That when you know there is something right, and this is something that pleases Allah, start it. Start it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the things easy for you. It will come. Maybe you need to do some work, obviously. But how the people will come and donate and uh, support you and give you, this is Allah. Because he said, Fasul Yasir will you Why? Because you are doing something to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani I remember when I, <clears throat> when I was in Jordan, we used to have a charity. And one of the activities of that charity, we used to do f uh, free medical, free medical days. Because you know there, 
you don't have NHS. Most of the health is private. So what we use that we invite uh, some doctors from Amman uh, because you'll find all these professional doctors in Amman. You don't find them in other other places. And we talk to the factories and uh, the suppliers of medicine. Believe me, believe me, brothers. This is you know went for maybe when I was there about five six years. We used to do this three four times a year. Sometimes more, it depends. Believe me, I never <clears throat> went to a doctor of these professionals, and most of them high rank, they consider them high rank. And one of them said to me, no, sorry, I cannot, I cannot come. He said, Jazakallah khair. Thank you for giving me opportunity to serve the people. The same with the factories, the medicine factories, and the agents, and all of these things. And you find, mashallah, three, four hundred people coming. The, they will be seen by professionals. They will have the medicine. Sometimes they ask them, come to my <clears throat> surgery or refer them to hospital or something like this. Why? Because the work is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my advice to myself and to all of you, put this, Aqa, Taqa, Sadaqa, Abul Husna, Sunni, Sirhul, Yusa. Give. Have taqwa. Believe in the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you'd like to do a campaign for giving, because you believe, and because you believe in Akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it smooth. And all the time, remember, <clears throat> when you do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah never let you down. Never! You do this Think for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you. But it must be for his sake, not for something else. Because there might be people, ata, but they don't have taqa. There is people, maybe there is some taqwa, but they don't believe in Allah. They just say, okay, let me give this. Two pounds, one pound. I am embarrassed. I, I don't want to leave the masjid without. Oh, look, all the brothers, mashallah, they are giving. So if I leave without giving, they might start looking at me, let me give. No. This is not Ata wa Taqwa Sadaqa al Husna. Ata wa Taqwa Sadaqa al Husna. Before you leave your house, you say, Yeah, Friday, the brothers collecting. Let me put some money in my books. Yeah, let me put 10 or 20 pounds. This is for, for the masjid. In the same way that I am going to do shopping, and I know that place accepts only cash, doesn't accept cards. Maybe the brothers start putting machine here. <laughs> okay? Because there will be no excuse. So if you don't have, then they'll use the machine. So, you know, there are some shops, some, they don't accept even cards. Or you, you need to have. Uh, cash, or if you like to cut your hair, or you go to the restaurant there, they will not accept car. You have to pay cash. So when you have this in your mind before you leave the house, this up, tapa, and you do this only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is Fasal Yassir Ghulius. Now the next ayahs, next three ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the contrary uh, criteria and word by word. So, what's the opposite of sadaqa? Kazira. Uh, uh, what's the opposite of aata? Bakhil. So, gives bakhil, the one who's stingy. Aata wa taqa. The opposite, bakhil wa stagna. So, that one fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this one stagna thinks that he is self sufficient. He doesn't need Allah. He works, he has his shop, business, skills. He thinks, why he need Allah? What? This is, and there's people, things like this. This is, I am, I am the one who's working. I am the one who's doing this. SubhanAllah. 
But if you ask them, okay, you are working with the brain, did you create that? No, no. So even the brain that you are using, from Allah. You use your hands, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You walk, because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bakhila wa So this is the first thing. So this is, and in one of the hadith, the Nabi Sallallahu he made a comparison. The meaning of the hadith that the Kareem, the generous, Qareeb min Allah. Qareeb min nas, Qareeb min al So he is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, close to people, close to Jannah, away from the hellfire. But the Bakhil, Ba'id min Allah, away from the Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even away from the people, away from the, the Jannah, but close to what? To the hellfire. And you'll find most of the people who are stingy, not true believers. Bakhila was And what? The opposite now. That one, Sadaqa bin Husna, this one, what we will do? Kazaba bin Husna. Takdi. And I think I mentioned this before, but it's good to say it again. Kathaba is different from Kathaba. Kathaba when someone lies. Okay. So when some come and tell you a lie, we say Kathaba. But when the Prophet comes and he tells the news and that person deny it, reject it, we call this Kathaba. You see the difference between the two, the two words. The same كذب بالحسنة. So he doesn't believe in the akhirah. He doesn't believe in the reward. He doesn't believe that there is a day of judgment that all the people will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will account them for what they are doing. So now we are what? What do we have? Action. What do we have? Action. What's the action? Bakhila, Stavna, Kadab al Then they will be our reward. What's the reward? Musra. Fasani, Sirhuni al Usra. So as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, but he who is greedy and thinks himself self sufficient <coughs> and denies al Husna, we will make smooth for him the path of evil. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وَمَا يُغْنِي عَنْهُ مَالُهُ إِذَا تَرَدَّ Because what will cause all of these things? The love of man, the love of wealth. But this wealth, and we will make smooth for him the path of evil. And what will his wealth avail him when he goes down in destruction? وَمَا يُغْنِي عَنْهُ مَالُهُ like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Abu Lahab. And all the time, the money will not save you from destruction. Doesn't matter who you are and how much money you have. You'll find people, they have a lot of money. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for reason or other, like to punish them. He punished them by their money. Their own money will be a punishment. So like a person, maybe he has shares or all. And one of these, what they call it, black days, when it, all the stock market goes down. So he punished by what? By, by his money. His money will be punished uh, by it. someone he has, he has money and uh, keep jewelry and other things at home. Then a burglar come and steal all of it. So all his money now will, will stop that uh, thief. Even with the CCTV cameras and these things, still they are doing these things. Stealing and breaking and doing all of these things. Maybe... Uh, You've seen, I've seen one or two of them. If you remember, maybe last year, I think, in Manchester, 
in the, this big mall, they went in the daytime and they took these, uh, I think, watches or uh, jewelry. jewelry in the front of the They know the CCTV there. They took it and and walk away. And I think there is busy a, area. other. That, what, that area is a busy area, actually. Is, uh, I know what is it exactly. So, وما يغني عنه ماله. So, the idea I'd like you know to share with you that a man, the wealth will not save you from destruction. Will not save you from health problems. Here, in, in this country, yeah, if someone has a problem, for example, cancer or these things, they will go to the hospital and look after him and try to treat him. But in what they call it, third, third world countries, <clears throat> if someone has a cancer, now, in most of the cases, you know, they, they discover the cancer after it is spread everywhere, then they just say to him, you know, you have to face it two, three months. I remember a case, that person, he, he was a good person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him and uh, bless his soul. But poor him, you know, they admitted him to the hospital, I visited him, and he, wa he was fine, but I think after one or two days they said he developed cancer. Because he has money, so they said, sent him to the United States. <coughs> and they spent a lot of money. I remember at that time they were took about more than 100,000 pounds. This is the United States. But at the end, poor him, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him again, that he came, he came back to Jordan in a box. So you have the money, but if there is something like dropping to you, it cannot prevent you from cancer or prevent you from having accident, having anything. And the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used here, taradda, taradda, the literature meaning that, you know, if you are standing on, on the roof and you'd like to jump, this is taradda. So it is like this person, he's doing it, taradda. This is why one of the things that it is forbidden to eat, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, surah al-ma'idah, wal-mutaradiyatu. What's al mutaradiyatu If you have a naughty sheep and this sheep, you know, jumped on the roof, you try to chase it, then it jumped from there, finished. Ah, you cannot eat and die, obviously. You cannot eat that. Because now, this called now in Mutaraddiya. So Taradda, it is like someone jumping, jumping to his fate. And when you, when you jump in this way, then you cannot go back because it's finished. Because this is the destruction now. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us here the example of these two. This is the great message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending to all of us. That after you reading this, understand it, now you have not to choose because Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen you are believers. Alhamdulillah this is bliss from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are believers but we have to fix our affairs now. To fix our attitude regarding this matter. So all the time give it, all the time we have to be ready to give. Doesn't matter. Pound, five, ten, twenty, one hundred give and even instill this in your children really i like when i see some brothers here they give the two pounds or the five pounds to their child and say to give it to their child this is very good excellent because this child will notice much i'm giving oh he enjoying giving so when 
when giving becomes an enjoyment to him, he'd like to do this. So when he grew up, he grew up in this great value that he saw his father giving. His father encouraged him to give, or his mother, and now it became part of his personality. So when there is any cause for giving, he will be one of the first people to come and give, because now this is part of, of his personality. And the, the other message in, in this, now you have to understand that if you act differently, بخلة, you, you practice in bukhul to be stingy and to think that you are self-sufficient and then you don't believe in the, in the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, when I put lahum al adad madda, you will find people now. There is, they have money, they have uh, houses, different things that they don't give. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep giving them, keep providing them, but they don't worth anything. In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these people who are just collecting, 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 this is you know, this is their duty, they, not their duty. This is what they're worth. They're worth going and collecting. Collecting the rubbish of this thing. Because really, when you, when you look at it, they collect it, collect it, collect it. Then, their children, they die, the children fight over the, over this, oh. He, uh, this house is for me, no, no, this is not, not, not for you, I am, still uh, younger, you married, and you, you'll find, you'll find the boys, the girls, the in-laws, the, the mother, all of them fighting on what he, what he left. So he spent all his life collecting for them, and when he dies, subhanAllah, you'll not, you'll not find many, many of the people, they say, Oh Allah, forgive him or forgive her. They say, oh, what he left for me. I heard the word today from non-Muslim. He was talking about charities and these things. And he said, one person, what he did, he has many properties. And he wrote it. So he put in the will, I leave all the, 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 the properties and the will that I, I possess to this ch certain charity. And the charity, he didn't name the reason, uh, and I think it is something disgusting, but the idea is that he said that for that charity, and I leave for my son the disappointment. So this is what they do, some of them. So I'm thinking about it in the other way. I'm thinking about you, myself, as parents and these things. If we spend this life and just we are occupied by collecting without thinking about the akhirah, without giving. So what we leave, they will be distribute, distributed and what we'll have? This is the disappointment. Because when, when it comes to the hisab, oh, what you give to Allah, I gave my son, my wife, and this, I bought for them this. Okay, what you gave for Allah? Oh, nothing. I was, all the time I care about him. Okay, care about yourself. Care about yourself. Put some credit there some credit in your account that on the Day of Judgment you'll find it. Because all these things that you are donating, you'll find it there. But what you leave, Allah will what they will do with it. So uh, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped me to talk about uh, these 11 ayahs of Surah Al-Layl. And inshallah, not next week, the week after, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
was will will continue, inshallah. I remind you that maybe the brothers announced it, and I spoke about it last week. So inshallah, next week, from Maghrib onwards, we'll talk about Maryam and Isa alayhim, alayhim al salam to uh, say the true story about all of these things and what the lessons that we learn from the life of Maryam and the life of Isa, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair for listening. Subhanakallah wa bihamdi wa shidda wa ilaha 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 ilaha.